Yes, I'm in my Christmas top. It is December, so that's why I'm wearing it. Slight apology first of all, I know that we didn't do a video last week and there has been a little bit of inconsistency on the videos recently. The reason for it, I run a business and it's a recruitment company. At the end of the year and the very early part of years, the market that we concentrate on gets very, very busy. So hence my focus hasn't been on doing videos. Now, if you haven't seen our videos before, we do videos aimed to help employees, and that's employees either in employment or out of employment. The purpose of our channel is to be very honest, very real, and we will tell it as it is at times. If you like the sound of it, do consider subscribing to our channel, click the bell icon so you're not gonna miss any one of our videos, and select all so you will be reminded of all of our videos, and you can see them all moving forward. So with that, let's get to this video. The release of the vaccine itself in the UK was a couple of days ago. Now, the UK was the first country in the world to release an official vaccine. I know that China and I think Russia themselves have released unofficial, unverified vaccines. If you are watching from abroad, basically the people that are going to get the vaccine, first of all, are going to be people that are 90 years old or over, care home staff, and frontline care home workers. So the people that are seen as the most vulnerable, most likely to be at risk from this, they're the people that are getting it first. And there is a tiered system that goes down from there and reduces the level of urgency that you have the vaccine based on certain circumstances. It goes down generally in age group and generally by certain health risks. If you are under 50 years old and you have no known health conditions, then it is unlikely that you are gonna receive the vaccine at any point soon. Then there's constantly being worried about your job security with the lack of communication, the lack of information, the lack of clarity from the government and the various government sources, because let's be fair about it, we haven't really experienced anything like this in our lifetime. It became very difficult to predict and plan for the future. One minute you're thinking things are looking on the up, the next minute we're going back into a lockdown and you could lose your job. So job security was a major sticking point and a major factor of concern for many people around the country. And if you did manage to keep your job, then being on furlough has its downsides. There's only so many foreign languages like Japanese that you really have the motivation to wanna to learn, and there's only so much redecorating of your bathroom you can do. So hearing that a vaccine has been released and it's being rolled out in the country must be music to your ears. Before we even know it, we'll be back to a normal world. We can do simple things like going to the pub, going to a restaurant, being able to walk past someone in the street without having to step out into the road. You can even hug a stranger, if that's what you're into. So, jobs galore, right? No. Firstly, the vaccine rollout won't take five minutes. This is going to take some time. Think PPE palaver that happened earlier in the year. If the government's handling of getting PPE to frontline NHS staff was anything to go by, well, that went about as successfully as Donald Trump's latest presidential campaign. And when it comes to PPE, all the government had to do was get a few hundred thousand items. We're talking about 14 million doses of a vaccine here. The family holiday abroad basically went out the window in 2020, because if you did go abroad, you'd have to come back and then quarantine for two weeks. So most people didn't want to do that. Now, if you had a cushy office job or the type of job where it could mean you could transition to working at home all the time, then that's not so bad. But if you had a manual job, a job where you had to go to work, well, that inconvenience was about as convenient as getting a P45. And sadly, in many instances, people did receive a P45. So if you're hoping that this vaccine rollout is gonna be a streamlined process, I'm not holding out quite as much optimistic hope myself. I think there'll be delays. I think there'll be problems. I think there'll be holdups. And that's not even taking into account any implications of a Brexit deal gone bad. There is a positive. Employers can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that means that more jobs are going to be created. The jobs market has been a nightmare for not one, but two reasons. Market demand has been hindered by restrictions, which we all know. But secondly, and probably more impactfully, it's because employers can't plan ahead. If you can't see what decisions are going to be made, what outcomes are going to happen, you don't know what way the government's going to go, if they're going to put another lockdown on, you're hardly going to go out doing hiring campaigns, are you? After all, you're not going to start driving anywhere if you can't see the road ahead. Unless, of course, your name's Dominic Cummings, maybe. But what's changed is now companies do know the road ahead. 
they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So all of a sudden, companies can start making plans. You could start having a good idea of when restrictions are going to be lifted. Yes, it's not going to be five minutes. And yes, if I'm being honest with you, the first quarter of next year up until the end of March, you're still going to have restrictions. You're still going to have tiers. You're still going to have limitations on what you can and cannot do. One thing that we've noticed as a recruitment company is that all of the clients that were very busy before March 2020, but went very quiet after March 2020, have all of a sudden restarted their hiring campaigns. They're starting to look for people and we're starting to get busy. Now, is there a coincidence there? I think not. For some industries, such as hospitality, leisure, aviation, I think the road ahead is a little bit longer just yet. Most of the jobs created in those industries are created more proactively rather than reactively. If, for example, you're in a supermarket and you don't have enough shelf stackers, put an advert out, bring a shelf stacker in. If you're in the aviation industry, you've got to get your bookings in beforehand. People book holidays a few months before. So if you are working in those industries, there's going to be a bit more of a delay just yet. What you're really waiting for in the employment market isn't a vaccine. We've got that. What you're waiting for is a lift to the restrictions. You want things to go back to normal. After all, a vaccine is there, but the chances of it being able to be rolled out quick enough are very unlikely. Restrictions are only going to be lifted once the government is satisfied that hospitals won't become overrun. You see, what the government won't officially tell you is that they're not actually that bothered about infection rates. They're not even that bothered about deaths. Deaths and infectious diseases, they kind of come in the same territory. That's how it works, sadly. What the government are worried about is if you turn up with your mum or your dad or your grandma, something like that, and you go to a hospital and you get turned away because they've breached their capacity, there's going to be blood on the streets. People are already wound up like a Millwall fan craving a fight. What you don't need is people getting turned away because that's going to turn into near civil war. Your typical doom and gloom will tell you that kiss goodbye to 2021. It'll be the same as 2020. We'll never return to normal. Things will never be the same again. On the other hand, you'll have your optimist that will tell you it's all going to be over by January 2020 and we're back to normal. Now, I'm an optimist, but a realistic one. And my prediction is that by April 2021, you will see restrictions start to be lifted permanently and you will see hospitals have a re very much reduced risk of becoming overrun. Yes, there'll be adaptations. You'll have maybe more people working at home, more remote jobs. But the world we saw before will be very much back to the way it was before. You'll be able to do things, have freedom, go on holiday without having to be confined to your home, for example. That's my prediction of when I think things will be over. But what's your prediction? Do you think 2021 is going to be a kiss goodbye? If you want to see more videos from us or you have ideas for videos, please do put them in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you're not going to miss any one of our videos.